Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stabenn County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. And as you can see, I'm ready to welcome summer this weekend. And as we know, the summer reading season is a great time to read a new book. So check out our video cast and you may discover a book or two that you absolutely love. Library Connections number 57. This is the Friday, June 18th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. And it's almost summer. Summer will be arriving this weekend, hooray. And with that in mind, this is the first video in a two-part special summer reading series of Library Connections. Seems like a good time to offer some summer reading tips since the season is upon us. We will offer two special summer reading editions this weekend next, so you can binge read some of the best books of the year while at the lake, the beach, while in your backyard, or while sitting on your couch in front of the AC or fan, if you're anything like me and not a heat fan. But wherever you decide to read this summer, I'm going to offer 20 great books that you might enjoy this summer, 10 this week and 10 next week. And on the following week, which is Friday, July 2nd, I'm going to offer a special Independence Day edition of Library Connections, spotlighting great books, audios, and streaming titles that are set during the founding era of our country. And don't worry, they won't all be nonfiction although I will definitely include David McCullough's 1776. It's very accessible and it's one of those nonfiction books that reads like fiction. And here we see a photo of the interior of Independence Hall where the Declaration of Independence was signed. So in a nutshell, the Library Connection schedule for the next three weeks features three special editions. The Friday, June 18th edition, that's this one, Summer Reading Recommendations Part 1. Next week, the Friday, June 25th edition, Summer Reading Recommendations Part 2. And the following week, which is July 2nd, a special Independence Day edition of Library Connections. The week after that, which is already July 9th, we will return to our usual weekly format. Before we get to the summer reading recommendations, let's start out with the top five fiction bestsellers of the week from the New York Times. At number one, The President's Daughter by Bill Clinton and James Patterson. Matthew Keating, a past president and former Navy SEAL, goes on his own to find his abducted teenage daughter. At number two, Golden Girl by Ellen Hildebrand. A Nantucket novelist gets one final summer to watch what happens from the great beyond. At number three, Tom Clancy, Target Acquired by Don Bentley. A cushy assignment to help the CIA puts Jack Ryan Jr. in the sights of trained killers. At number four, The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. Hannah Hall discovers truths about her missing husband and bonds with his daughter from a previous relationship. At number five, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Four famous siblings throw an epic party to celebrate the end of summer, but over the course of 24 hours, their lives will change forever. And I have to say, that book I know is set in the 1980s, and we'll pretend that the four famous siblings are at the end of their summer but as we're at the beginning of ours this weekend, we'll just imagine them throwing a great party at the end of summer 
in the 1980s and we'll get to enjoy weeks and weeks of summer here okay I'm digressing moving along to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week at number one killing the mob by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggard the tenth book in the conservative commentators killing series looks at organized crime in the United States during the 20th century at number two the body keeps the score by Bessel van der Kolk how trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery at number three what happened to you by Bruce D Perry and Oprah Winfrey an approach to dealing with trauma that shifts an essential question used to investigate it at number four how the word is passed by Clint Smith a staff writer at the Atlantic explores the legacy of slavery and its imprint on centuries of American history and at number five green lights by Matthew McConaughey the Academy Award-winning actor shares snippets from the diaries he kept over the last 35 years and without further ado here are our first 10 summer reading recommendations in alphabetical order because well being a librarian not surprisingly perhaps I like to have things be in alphabetical order so they're in alphabetical order just FYI so if people don't think maybe the first recommendation is the best I don't mean to indicate that I think these are all top-notch books our first summer reading recommendation is actually a twofer this is the first book in a series the second book has just been published but I'm going to talk about the first book first it's called catfishing on cat net and it's a novel by Naomi Kurtzer in this thoughtful near future techno thriller a sentient AI that secretly runs an online community dedicated to animal pictures befriends a lonely young woman she spent her whole life fleeing her violent stalker father unable to make any lasting connections in meat space Steph age 16 has found a sense of community and acceptance on CatNet unaware that the admin Cheshire Cat isn't human when she and her mother move again this time to a tiny Wisconsin town Steph doesn't expect to be there long and she definitely doesn't expect to make friends but ends up with kind and witty IRL companions such as artsy Rachel after attempting to help the solitary teen Cheshire Cat reveals their true nature then goes offline propelling Steph and her friends to uncover the dark secret lurking in her family's past alongside the uplifting message about inclusivity diversity and found family characters of various ethnicities identify as gay bisexual non-binary asexual and still exploring Kurtzer's take on a benevolent AI is both whimsical and poignant an entertaining heart-filled exploration of today's online existence and privacy concerns and that is the starred publishers weekly review and on a reader's note as I mentioned catfishing on catnet is the first book in the catnet series the second book titled chaos on catnet has just been published and continues Steph's story our second summer reading recommendation is the new novel the charmed 
Wife by Olga Gershon. Gershon follows her novel 40 Rooms with a reconceived and extended fairy tale that will delight domestic fiction readers with its depiction of Cinderella as an overweight and lackluster 35-year-old wife to an ignoble prince and the mother of two children. Gershon achieves a fairy tale style and brings in characters from the works of the brothers Grimm and Charles Perrault. The plot thickens when Gershon unveils a despondent Cinderella who, after trying other solutions, is now intent on exacting revenge on her husband. She finds a witch in a cave who is willing to grant her wish. She wants her prince dead. As the potion brews in the cauldron, flashbacks reveal how this happy ever after marriage ceased to be so. The mystery of how a woman who has everything would resort to drastic measures is at the core of the book and pivots the fairy tale back to its moral roots. An element of suspense is worked into a tapestry of new and modern backstories, while nostalgic storylines add a bit of fun. There is even a side story about Cinderella's mice that deserves its own separate book. Surprising revelations and some snark provide the finishing touch in this richly imagined genre-bending retelling of, at its heart, a tale as old as time. And that is the Bookless Review. Our third summer reading recommendation for this week is the new Laura Lippman novel, Dream Girl. Successful novelist Jerry Anderson, the protagonist of this delicious literary thriller from Edgar Award winner Lippman, has moved to Baltimore from New York to be near his ailing mother. He has barely settled into his duplex penthouse when his mother dies. While mulling over his agent's suggestion that he write a memoir and trying to overcome the rising fear that he'll never write again, Jerry slips and falls down his dangerous but artistically designed staircase. His injuries are severe and he's confined to bed and cared for by round-the-clock nurses. Befuddled by painkillers, Jerry's mind drifts back over episodes in his life, his childhood, the highs and lows of his three marriages, his book tours, and teaching jobs. One night, he receives a phone call from a woman claiming to be Aubrey, a character in his first and still royalty producing novel, Dream Girl. The calls persist, as do shadowy nighttime appearances of a woman. He scrambles to separate truth from possible hallucinations until one morning he awakes to find a woman undeniably dead in his bed. Perceptive, often amusing insights into a writer's mind make this a standout. Lipman is in top form for this enticingly witty, multi-layered guessing game. And that is the starred Publishers Weekly Review. Summer reading recommendation four is the new Ellen Hildebrand novel, Golden Girl. Just when best-selling author Vivi Howe 
achieves critical success, she's killed by a hit and run driver. Then she's whisked away to a boho chic green room where she can watch her family on Nantucket and while she awaits the release of what now is her final novel, Golden Girl. Despite the supernatural twist, this is classic Hildebrand. Multiple perspectives, those of each of Vivi's three young adult children, Willa, Carson, and Leo, her ex-husband, his girlfriend, the chief of police, and a Greek chorus of Nantucketers, to name but a few, reveal inner turmoil and secrets, including the high school boyfriend nobody knew about who inspired Howe's Golden Girl. The investigation seems to stall when evidence disappears, until a culprit who seems a little too likely appears. But as always, the plot is secondary to the reading experience, or what I'd call the reading journey, as Hildebrand once again transports readers to Nantucket, from the Oyster Catcher Bar to the Field and Ore Club and the Nickel and its mouth-watering sandwiches. Oof, yum. The meta aspects of this novel about life and forgiveness read like Hildebrandt's swan song. But hopefully, she has many more Nantucket tales in store. And that is the bookless review. And now I'm gonna be dreaming about mouth-watering sandwiches until I get one. Something like this Dagwood maybe, although I think that's a Dagwood for three, but gonna to have to make myself a sandwich, I think. Our fifth summer reading recommendation for this week is the new Stephen Raleigh novel, The Ga-Uncle. In this heartwarming, hilarious novel from Raleigh, an erstwhile sitcom star ends up taking care of his niece and nephew. Patrick O'Hara is four years out of the limelight and living in Palm Springs, California, when he learns his best friend and sister-in-law, Sarah, has died after a long illness. When Patrick is in Connecticut for the funeral, widower Greg confesses he's developed an addiction to painkillers. And Patrick agrees to watch over Greg's children, Maisie and Grant, ages nine and six, while Greg spends a few months in rehab. As Patrick navigates his grief and responsibilities for the children, who call him their uncle, or Gup for gay uncle Patrick, he contemplates a comeback. Fortunately, he has help from a new agent, the Thropal of Three Men Next Door, and his sister Clara. Despite Clara's skepticism over the value of Patrick's screwball antics for the children. Raleigh finds humor and poignancy in the snappy narrative, ordered by a series of agonical rules and deepened by lessons the grief stricken children learn via Patrick from generations of gay life. Readers will find this delightful and illuminating. And that is the publisher's weekly review. Summer reading recommendation number six for this week is an action adventure book. It's called In the Company of Killers by Brian Christie. International crime journalist Tom Clay closes in on his nemesis. Ivory smuggling kingpin Aras Botha and finds that he's been asking all the wrong questions. Years ago, Clay was recruited as a CIA asset by Vance Eady, his editor-in-chief at The Sovereign, I think National Geographic. 
ostensibly to work on his own terms. When Clay's obsession with Botha results in Clay's closest friend's death, Edie promises a series of missions that will take Botha down. While Clay is in the Philippines, gathering intel on Botha's smuggling operation, however, the Sovereign is sold to a global tech powerhouse, the Perseus Group, and Edie retires. Terry Krieger, Perseus's founder, claims that his goal is to further the Sovereign's human rights and conservation mission. But Clay's encounters with Perseus abroad says otherwise. With his future at the Sovereign questionable, Clay makes use of his reporter status and heads to Johannesburg to help a rogue prosecutor take on both a smuggling empire and a corruption case against South Africa's president. Too late, he realizes that he's underestimated the reach of Perseus's plot. Fans of both espionage and global crime thrillers will find a gem here. Clay is an introspective, flawed survivor who bends operative stereotypes and the intersection of corporate greed, media, technology, and crime is chillingly current. And that is the Bookless Review. Our seventh summer reading recommendation for this week is the new novel Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Nina, Jay, Hud, and Kit Riva are household names in 1983, as much because their father is rock star Mick Riva as for their surfing talent. None of them wanted to live in the spotlight, but despite Mick taking off long ago, they do. Then it's the night of the annual Riva party, where everyone wants to be except maybe responsible Nina, and when anything can happen. Over the course of 24 hours, the Riva siblings will have to decide if their futures will be driven by the legacies of their parents, or if they'll share the secrets that just might let them choose their own paths. Structuring the novel to take place over one day and night Reed asks if it's possible to keep only parts of what you get from your parents. Multiple perspectives, including flashbacks to Mick and June's courtship, intricate relationships, spot on surf scenes, plus a wild party that could only have happened in the 1980s, make for a fun summer read that challenges the idea of passing on what we inherit. Recommended to fans of Jennifer Werner and Catherine Center. High demand backstory. Reed's fan base has grown with each novel and with multiple books in development for television, Malibu Rising will be the sought after book of the summer. And that's the Library Journal Review. And definitely that's a summer read. Our eighth summer reading recommendation for this week is the only nonfiction book on this list. I tend to think that most people prefer fiction titles to nonfiction, but this one was just too good. Every so often you find a nonfiction book that reads like it's fiction, if you know what I mean. It's just perfectly accessible, it's fun. So this is that book for this list. It's called Mergers and Acquisitions, or Everything I Know About Love I Learned on the Wedding Pages by Kate Doty. Former New York Times editor Catherine Doty takes readers 
through her experience of finding love professionally and personally in this engaging memoir. As a writer for the paper's wedding section, Dodie spent her days confirming details of the lives of the rich and famous, whose nuptials were slated to be featured in the section. All the while, she was searching for love herself. Seamlessly blending stories from her upbringing and the ups and downs of her romance with a fellow reporter, Dodie breathes life into her memoir with these touching, often humorous tales. While she claims that she learned all she knows about love from the wedding pages, it's clear from her writing that she also grew up among a loving family and circle of friends. After years of covering weddings, brides and grooms, Dodie develops an understanding of love and marriage. She postulates, despite an industry pretty much dedicated to encouraging us to believe otherwise, these fancy weddings don't mean anything unless the love is real. She concludes by recounting her own path to marriage as a white woman and reflecting on the racialized history of domesticity. Verdict. Dodie's love-filled memoir will delight readers hoping for an inside look at the wedding section and will also be loved by fans of uplifting memoirs. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Our ninth summer reading recommendation for this week is the new novel by Zakia Delayla Harris. It's called The Other Black Girl. In Harris's slyly brilliant debut, a young editorial assistant is thrilled when her glaringly white employer hires another black woman. But it soon becomes clear there's something sinister about the new girl who isn't what she seems. Young, literary, and ambitious, Nella Rogers has spent the last two years as an editorial assistant at Wagner Books, a premier New York City publishing house where for the entirety of her somewhat stalled tenure, she's been the only black person in the room. How she feels about this depends on the day. For all her frustrations, she can't help but be a little proud of her outsider status. But still, she's excited when she detects another black girl on her floor. Finally, someone else who gets it. And she does, at first. Wagner's newest editorial assistant, Hazel May McCall, cool and self-possessed, is quick to befriend Nella, echoing her frustrations with the never-spoken racial politics of their office and encouraging her to speak up. But it doesn't take long for Nella to realize there's something off about Hazel, even if she can't quite put her finger on it. There's something weird about how easily she fits in among the higher-ups at Wagner, about the way she's instantly and universally beloved by top editors, the way her story, born in Harlem, daughter of civil rights activists, a grandfather who died protesting, exactly matches their ideas about blackness in a way that Nella's middle-class suburban childhood never will. And then, shortly after Hazel's arrival, the first anonymous note arrives on Nella's desk. Leave Wagner now. Hazel, maybe? And if Hazel didn't leave the note, 
then who did? Nella begins searching for answers and in the process finds herself at the center of a dangerous conspiracy that runs far deeper than she could ever have known. If it sounds like a moralistic sledgehammer of a novel, well, it would be if Harris were any less good. In her hands, though, it's a nuanced page turner as sharp as it is fun. A biting social satire cum thriller, dark, playful, and brimming with life. And that is the Kirkus Review. And our 10th summer reading recommendation for this week is the new Emily Henry novel, People We Meet on Vacation. And they've got it right on the cover, just under the author's name there. It says, author of Beach Read. That was her fun 2020 summer read. So if you haven't read that one, you might read Beach Read and then read People We Meet on Vacation or vice versa. Having said that, here's a little bit about the plot. Two best friends, 10 summer trips, and one last chance to fall in love. From the New York Times bestselling author of Beach Read comes a sparkling new novel that will leave you with the warm, hazy afterglow usually reserved for the best vacations. Poppy and Alex, Alex and Poppy, they have nothing in common. She's a wild child and he wears khakis. She has insatiable wanderlust and he prefers to stay home with a good book. And somehow, ever since a fateful car share home from college, many years ago now, they are the very best of friends. For most of the year, they live far apart. She's in New York City, and he lives in their small hometown. But every summer, for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together. Until two years ago, when they ruined everything. They haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but she's stuck in a rut. When someone asks when she was last truly happy, she knows, without a doubt, he was on that ill-fated final trip with Alex. And so, she decides to convince her best friend to take one more vacation together, lay everything on the table, make it all right. And miraculously, he agrees. Now she has a week to fix everything. If only she can get around the one big truth that has always stood quietly in the middle of their seemingly perfect relationship. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I think we can imagine. And that's a great summer read, the new novel by Sue Henry. No, it's not. It's the new novel by Emily Henry. Sue Henry is the great mystery author. And now that I've said that, her books are good reading at any time of the year. And I will put some information about Sue Henry's great mysteries at the end of this video cast. So here we go. Sue Henry, great mystery writer, best known, I think, for her Jesse Arnold mysteries. The first one is called Murder on the Idiotrod Trail. The books are set in Alaska. Top-notch mysteries. So if you haven't read the Jesse Arnold series, there are 12 books in the series. Check them out. The first book is available to request through Starcat and Libby, and it's available for instant checkout as an ebook through Hoopla. And here are the available formats of the books contained in this presentation. As of right now, today is June 17th. I know that some of these titles are on order for the digital catalog and a few others as additional print books. So more formats will be coming soon. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. Send an email to me 
at brimerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. On a library hours note, the Southeast Tibet County Library has recently changed its hours. We are now open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are currently closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org. You can access a whole host of information through our website, including our calendar of events and the online versions of our catalogs. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library system, which encompasses the public libraries in Stiben, Shemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can find StarCat online at starcat.stls.org, or you can download the BookMine app, which is basically StarCat in app form, and you can download it to your mobile device and access the catalog at your convenience through your mobile device. The Digital Catalog and its companion apps Libby and Overdrive. The Digital Catalog features ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, magazines, and a handful of streaming videos. Also of note, you can check out ebooks through the Digital Catalog and enjoy them on your dedicated e-reader like the Kindle Paperwhite. For mobile devices, you download the Libby or Overdrive app. The Libby app is for newer devices, and the Overdrive app is for older devices and Kindle tablets. Additionally of note, the digital catalog is found online, stls.overdrive.com, so you can enjoy content from the digital catalog on a computer if you wish. Content in the digital catalog is available for all cardholders within the Southern Tier Library system. Hoopla! The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast to Bend County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. You can download the Hoopla app to your mobile device, video streaming player, or smart TV, or you can go online to hooplaDigital.com and check out materials on your computer and enjoy them through your desktop or laptop computer. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic, or really at any time, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. Our phone number is area code 607-936-3713. Again, that's area code 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. We have our Book Club for Adults blog found at ssclbook.club. And as you might expect, that features information on the monthly Book Club for Adults. We have the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog found at corningnyhistory.com. That features weekly postings that show photos of the area back in the day. And Creation Stationery, the Makerspace blog found at creationstationery.com. That's the complimentary blog for our Makerspace. We have the Story Musings blog a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, that can be found at storymusing.blogspot.com. And finally, Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog with occasional helpful how-to tech tips thrown in for good measure. And that's found at ssctech.com. And here are our references for this week. 
And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great day.